Hey, there we go. I uh, got cut off for a minute there, but uh, there's the answer, guys, to number three. Thank you guys for keep uh, continuing to watch this video. Uh, part two. This is part two. So if you accidentally clicked on this, guys, please go back and watch part one uh, to get the beginning of the notes. All right, so let's keep going with here with part two. Uh, so we're talking about quotient of powers, guys. That means, again, fancy way to say divide. So for this last, last, last one here, we're going to break it up piece by piece. We're going to look at our coefficients here. We have 16 divided by 4. Those are just coefficients, numbers in front. So that's going to work just like regular division. Well, what is 16 divided by 4? That's just 4. All right, if we move on to our a's here, a to the 8th divided by a to the 3rd. Uh, again, if we're dividing, we have the same base, a and 8. We're going to subtract 8 minus 3, which is going to give us 5. a to the 5th power. We have one more thing we got to take care of. That's b is b to the 2nd divided by b to the 5th. Well, 2 minus 5 is going to give us b to the negative 3rd. Now, again, I'm still not happy with that answer. I have to fix it. Let me draw my fraction bar underneath all this. This is going to equal, let me rewrite it that one more time. The only one that I really need to fix here is that negative 3, b to the negative 3rd power. I don't like to see negative exponents. Uh, and again, this one's sitting in the numerator, so we're going to drop it down to the denominator and turn it into a positive 3 now. Um, everything else, guys, stays right up top, 4a to the 5th power. None of that is changing. None of that is changing. All right, there you have that final answer. All right, I think I have, yes, two more properties here, guys. We're almost done. We're almost done. Um, so the last two things that we talked about when we were talking about exponents were zero powers and negative exponents. We've kind of been talking about negative exponents and a little bit about zero powers. Uh, but you can't forget zero power, zero power, anything to the zero power. Let's say you have uh, a to the zero power. Whoops. A to the zero power, not one. A to the zero power. Anything to the zero power, guys, is always going to give us one. You could have one hundred to the zero power, and that's simply just going to be one. All right, so I want you guys to do the same thing. Take a minute, uh, pause the video here, try these four problems out, see how much we remember, uh, and then when you're ready for the solutions, go ahead and hit play. All right, for the first one here, we have simply x to the zero power. Again, anything to the zero power, guys, is simply just going to be one. So that just simplifies to be one. Uh, if you got that, you're good. Now, be careful with number two. Um, who does that zero really belong to, right? We have to understand, hey, that exponent, it only, in this case, it only, it only belongs to the x. Here we have some, it's really what this is saying. This is saying six times x to the zero power, but x to the zero power is going to turn into what's anything to the zero power, that's going to turn into a one. So really what we have here is six times one. What's six times one? That is just going to be six. That is simplified as much as we can. Now, careful on the next one here. Who does this zero belong to, right? Because everything here is enclosed in parentheses. Zero belongs to every single thing in there. Um, so all of that, you can put a big fat elephant in there. All of that to the zero power simply turns, it simplifies just to be one. That's a crazy power that parentheses have. That zero belongs to everything inside of that. All right, we have one more to take care of here. This time we're dealing with quotient where we're dividing. So let's just like we did before. Let's take it one piece at a time. A to the seventh divided by A to the third. Subtract those exponents when we're dividing. So seven minus three gives us A to the fourth power. If we do that one more time, um, we get b to the fifth divided by b to the fifth. Well, if I try subtracting, it's five minus five gives us zero, b to the zero power. And I don't want to leave it like that. I, I want to keep going. I want to keep going. Uh, again, b to the zero power, where that zero only belongs to the b, not the entire thing. Uh, that zero exponent only belongs to the b. So this is what turns into a one. Um, and if I just bring down the a to the fourth power, technically what we had here was a to the fourth times one. That's still just going to be a to the fourth. Nothing's really changing when you multiply by one. All right, moving on to the last one here, negative exponents. So again, we hate we hate having negative exponents. We always like to kind of clean those up. Um, so the way that we fix it is we simply just move its position. If it's sitting on top of uh, in our numerator, we move it to the bottom and we turn it into a positive. If we have a negative exponent, in our denominator, we move it to the top. Let me give you guys a few examples. Um, let's say you had x to the negative fifth power. Well, right now, right now, if I draw my little fraction bar, it's it's it would be underneath here. So it's sitting up above right now. The way that we fix a negative exponent, if it's in the numerator, we drop it down, and it turns into a positive five. Now we're just going to go ahead and put a one up there as a placeholder. 
Um, now, let me give you guys kind of the reverse version of that. What if I had something like 1 over, uh, let's say we had x to the negative 7th down below. Well, what we have to do is right now that negative exponent is sitting down below in the, new, in the denominator, excuse me. We have to kick it to the top. As soon as we move it to the top, x to the now 7th becomes positive 7th. Uh, you could put a 1 underneath there as a placeholder. And be careful, you're not flipping the fraction. You're moving what's in the bottom. There's technically a 1 that stays down there as a placeholder. This is still just going to be x to the positive 7th power. All right, so take a minute, guys. Uh, try these out here. Try to fix all the negative exponents that do show up. Um, when you're ready for the solutions, go ahead and hit play. All right, for number one, again, I notice I have a negative exponent. Right now, it's sitting in the denominator. So if we kick it to the top, it turns into x to the positive fourth power. There is technically a 1 there. You could write it. It looks a little tacky. We don't really write a 1 in front of our x uh, unless we really need to. Um, and then, of course, x to the fourth, we can just rewrite that as x to the fourth. We don't need that fraction bar underneath. Right? There's technically a 1 down there as a placeholder as well, but it looks tacky. It looks tacky. We want to be bougie and write our answer in this form. Um, okay, moving on to the next one here, if it'll let me. Um, what's the issue that I have here? Well, I have A's, B's, C's, and D's. Uh, so again, there's nothing, no, there's no common basis. There's no two A's, two B's, or two C's that I can start subtracting. Um, but I do have all these ugly negatives. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here, I'm going to draw my giant fraction bar, uh, and I'm going to go one letter at a time. If one variable at a time. If it's okay, we'll leave it where it is. If not, we'll switch its position. A to the fifth power, that's a positive five that's sitting up above. And guess what? That's going to stay up there. I'm not going to mess with it. It's a positive exponent. It doesn't need to go anywhere else. It's going to sit up top. Uh, when I look at B though, that's B to the negative third. So we are going to have to drop that down to the denominator. As soon as I drop it down though, it does turn into a positive three. And that's it. That's as quick 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 fix let's move on to c if i move on to c here c to the neg another negative again it's sitting in the numerator so we're going to drop it down and it's going to turn into c to the positive second as soon as it's moved where it's at uh, again that negative exponent turns positive one more time one more time uh, this time we have d to the negative second but this time it's in the denominator so we're going to kick it up to the top and it's going to turn into a positive two there we have it that's all you have to do you're basically uh, just moving where things are at from the top to the bottom from the bottom to the top depending on those negative exponents all right the next one here we do have quotient of powers we are going to subtract we are probably going to get a couple negatives here um, x to the sixth divided by x to the eighth well six minus eight gives us negative two x to the negative second power let's keep going with the y's uh, y to the ninth divided by y to the second. 9 minus 2 gives us y to the seventh. All right, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. We got one more. z to the second divided by z to the seventh. So 2 minus 7 is going to give us z to the negative fifth power. And again, I still don't like that some of these values here um, are have negative exponents. So which ones need to move? Well, let's take it one letter at a time x to the negative second power yeah that has to go that has to drop down and it turns into a positive two y to the positive seven nope that's going to stay up top i'm not going to move that at all i'm going to let it sit let it sit uh z to the negative fifth that is again sitting up in the numerator let's drop it down and we'll make it a positive five there we have it that is your final answer all right one last one one last one okay for this one uh the only issue that we have with it uh, is this guy right here, x to the negative 5th. Be careful, uh, that negative 3 only belongs to the x, not the 5. The 5 is perfectly fine where it's at, uh, but this x to the negative 3rd does have to go down, and it turns into a positive 3. Uh, y to the 8th doesn't have to move. It's a positive. It's sitting down below. No, no need, no need, no need. That would be it. Um, and we would do want to write this a little bit neater. We, we're going to scoot that 5 towards the center. There we have it. There we have it. That is your final answer. All right, guys. So here is your class activity. You guys have 12 problems. So you guys know the deal. Please complete these on a separate piece of paper. Don't put away your notes. A lot of these examples look very simple. Uh, sorry, a lot of these problems look very similar to the examples we just finished doing. Uh, so use your notes to help guide you through this. Once you are done, check your answers with my sub. They do have the answer key. Uh, if everything's perfect, go ahead and turn it into the inbox. If you guys do finish early, 
don't forget, grades do go out Friday, so I would recommend that you guys use this time, if you have uh, time to spare here, uh, use this time to catch up on missing assignments. All right, guys, uh, take care. Have a wonderful day. Adios.